Elliot from the Bear Pit TV bringing you the transfer show live. Now, a lot's happened today. A uh, fair bit to get into this one. Do fire in your questions. As always, we'll get to them at the end. We're now live on Facebook, YouTube, uh, and also Periscope at the same time, which is a bit mental. But the players came back from training today. There was Philip Walshide was back. Bojan was back. Did not see Hosselu, a strange one. You'd expect him to be back. and must be on the move because we did also didn't see John Waters and Glenn Whelan. And John is obviously... Uh, looks like he's on the way out. That's later to come in the show. So basically, Bojan's also returned now, and it's Mark Hughes has seemed quite keen to make up with him as soon as possible. Uh, they've been hugging. There's been a brilliant picture going around of them actually embracing. Uh, and Mark Hughes says that Bojan is very much in his plans for this season. And you know, I think a lot, lot of people that's exactly what they want. Exact. Everyone wants to see Bojan back in the fold and back in the side. Um, next up, Hull announced um, that Josh Timmon had left the club. Now, we all know that this transfer has been coming for a while now. Uh, and funnily enough, it was announced by Inglemeyer Barbers, uh, Josh Timmon's Barbers in Hull yesterday, which you know pretty much sums up at the minute that a barber uh, has gone and announced a transfer before any uh, professional football club, which is a bit of a joke, really. But Stoke have announced that we've signed Josh Timmon on a five-year deal, the England youth left-back. Uh, Going to be interesting whether he can uh, challenge Eric Peters straight away. He made five Premier League appearances for Hull last season. Also played in the League Cup. Uh, he was understudy to Andrew Robertson, who's obviously being touted to a move to Liverpool at the moment. Um, I'm not too sure if he'll come straight in. I think Eric Peters is still going to be trusted by Mark Hughes, and he's going to play an understudy role uh, to Eric Peters this season. I think Josh Timmon, the first time we'll probably see him after a couple of sub-appearances, will be in a League Cup fixture. Uh, but it's gonna. Well, I'm sure we'll see a lot more how it pans out uh, over pre-season. You never know if Mark Hughes is playing wing backs. Josh Timmer could play wide, and Eric Peters central. Don't know how this is gonna pan out, and you know we will find out a lot more during pre-season. But Josh Timmer is now a Stoke City player. They also did a pretty strange announcement for the club. Um, tweeted signed someone Stoke, and then about ten. 10 minutes later or so, they actually had a video where it was actually Josh Timmon typing that and he did big thumbs up to camera. It's a bit of an awkward one. Uh, I think Sport Bible and Odds Bible have already put it out as one of the aw most awkward transfer announcements so far of the summer. But, you know, at least the club's trying trying to do something different, even if it was a little bit cheesy. Uh, and then next up, John Walters looks like he's off, which, you know, it, that hurts me a little bit because John Walters has been there throughout the Premier League uh, campaigns through the last eight, nine years, and he's been integral. He's been our all-time leading Premier League goal scorer. He scored at Wembley. He scored uh, in that big win against Liverpool. I think he got a hat-trick, if I remember rightly. But, you know, John Walters has always given everything. Uh, he's never left anything, come off the pitch thinking he could have given more. Uh, and some people aren't too happy about the thought of him leaving. The fee is apparently two million rising to three million to Burnley if he finishes the like, third year of his contract. Now he is getting on, he's at the back end of 34. So three million isn't a bad fee in with everything considered. But some people don't really want to see John Waters go. Um, I still think he's got a place at Stoke City. He could do a lot from the bench. But a lot of people are saying if we want to play the sexy football that Mark Hughes is promising, then John Waters has to go. You know, it's just one of those changes we've got to make. And, you know, I, I was torn. I said my heart wanted him to stay. Head says he's got to go. Uh, but it looks like John Waters is off. John Percy broke that news from the Telegraph earlier today. And it looks like a medical will be done within the next 48 hours that quickly. So that's going to leave a space for a player to come in. You hope. You hope we'd sign someone to replace John Waters, a younger uh, new fitter model maybe I'm not too sure but anyway let's go to your question a lot of, I've come onto the live stream all I can see is sad faces because people I think are John Walt sad that John Walters leaving there's just tons and tons and tons of sad faces um, so let's have a look at some of your comments uh, Ben Birdie says he's sad to see John go but good, good business in both cases uh, Gaz Summers says Walters gone question mark well he's, he's going it seems um, Tracy Davis says what do you think what do you think Walter's going, bro? Yeah, I've already said. I think he's off. A lot of angry faces now. So, yeah, a lot, I guess a lot of you are pretty pissed off at that news about John Walters. Uh, Nathan Stokey Dre says, any replacement for John Walters? There's none touted as of yet. We haven't seen a sort of attacking player linked with us. The most attacking player we've been linked with is probably uh, Delph. Um, I don't think he's that attacking. You know, he's a central midfielder. 
Um, Nick Zwechnikow, I hope that's how you say your last name, um, says he's gutted that Super Johnny has gone. Louis de Bank says, didn't see Sobby at training today. No, that's a good point. Didn't see Sobby, but I don't think he's going anywhere. Maybe he's got, just got an extended day's leave. Uh, Jordan Edwards says, why are we getting rid of Walters when he's the only one who tries every game he plays? I know this is. I know it's gonna. that move is going to upset a lot of people. It seems that uh, a lot of people really, like myself, really love John Walters and what he did for the club and how really he always gave his all. He, he, he never, never not put a shift in, uh, John Walters. Let's have a look at some more of your uh, messages. Wayne Jackson says he's watching from Lincolnshire. Hi, Wayne. Um, ben Cliff says, for me, when... Super Johnny Walters goes, we need another forward or winger to come in. I'd go for Andre Gray from Burnley or Lassa Vib from Brentford or go and get a Javier Hernandez for 13 million. A lot of Stoke fans since hearing Javier Hernandez is available for 13 million have said they want to sign him. But, you know, we've got Berahino in there. I think we're going to be sticking with that. Uh, Karen Haynes says, can't believe Super Johnny Walters is going to be gone. Ben Bolt on the Tim and signing says he's got good potential. Now, please get Ben Gibson in from Borough. Young, English and decent. Interesting uh, little snippet today. The Stoke uh, players have all been back from pre-season the first day and the club have been re releasing little, little snippets of different training sessions, different uh, bits that they've been doing in the gym. And there's a clip with uh, Verlinden in the gym doing some work. And in the background, you can hear Charlie Adam. And he actually mentions about a Ben Gibson, Gibson swap deal. But I think he's on about himself. I think he, he's making a joke about the transfer. But it is interesting to hear that Ben Gibson was mentioned in the gym at Claytonwood today. But if you go and find that clip on Twitter, have a little listen, see what you think for yourself. Um, Paul Mason says it's wrong to let John Walters go. Um, a couple of other comments... Nick Zwetnikow says I was close with his last name. Uh, Sam Richard says, when's the podcast being released? It's going to be released in about an hour or so. It'll be on. Um, podcast has been done the first of the summer series. You're going to have episodes from Switzerland. You're going to have episodes from Germany this summer. Uh, there's going to be an absolute ton of content for Stoke City fans. We're going to be out there. You're not going to miss a thing. Plenty more of these live streams. You'll see an absolute ton. And if any of you are actually going to any of those preseason games or, uh, abroad or at home, do let us know and you can come and be on the live stream. You could be on the transfer show if you want to. Uh, ben Bolt says, told you Bear Pit, he's coming. Um, there's also some talk of people thinking Sacco. I know that Stoke Loud and Proud have said that they think we're going to break a transfer record on a centre-back. First I've heard, uh, they did also say could, you know, so it's probably a bit of guesswork there. Sacco's obviously available. I think he's destined for Chris, back to Crystal Palace. Uh, ben Gibson would probably go around the 20 million mark or so just because he's English, you know, you know that it's uh, inflated fees. Um, last few couple of questions. Tracy Vaughan says, please stay, John. Aunt Dean says, says, John has been one of the most consistent players we've had. Let's have faith in him, Hughes, and move on. Injuries are popping up regular with him now. And Kirk Stubbs, as we said earlier, says, anyone notice Joss Lou hasn't been seen yet? He wasn't there for pre-season, but guess who was? Philip Walshide. Walshide's back with his funny arms. Uh, I'm going to end it there. That has been the transfer show. The podcast will be out later. Wherever you're watching, please do like, comment, retweet, subscribe, all that good stuff. And thank you for watching.